Today on Locked on Cowboys, we have John Owning here to talk about all things Cowboys. We're going to talk about what happened last season and what's going to happen next season. All this and more on today's Locked on Cowboys. You are Locked on Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on. Locked on. Locked on. Locked on. Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We would like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com forward slash Locked On to get started. I am your host, Landon McCool, and uh, we have a, a, a special, special guest with us today, and it is John Owning from PFF. Uh, John, say hello to the people. Huh? How's it going, man? Happy to be here. Always, always happy to talk some cowboys with you, Landon, my my Hawaii mate. That's right. That's right. John and I uh, had a, quite a uh, a run in in Hawaii just uh, last year. God, time has fallen by. It was it, one one cowboy season ago. I can tell you that. <laughs> Uh, that's that's how we kind of measure the the passing of time and and John this last season especially the uh, the postseason really took uh, some time off my life I will say that uh, the way it ended especially uh, but it feels like you know there's good portions of of the regular season that was you know pretty good uh, and and look we let's we're gonna get into that uh, we're also gonna talk about the the defense a little bit later and and kind of the the future of 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 the of what this is going to look like as we head into the 2024 season but let's let's again start with with where specifically let's start with the offense and how it looked this season you know obviously we the way the the season ended was quite a letdown um, but it definitely felt like there was huge portions of this offense uh, of the season where this offense was the number one offense in football and was doing great so you know going back and looking at things you know, if you had to, to put this on one or two things that, you know, what, what, what was, what was the thing that made us go from so happy about the way this offense was running at certain points in the regular season to the kind of disappointment that we faced when we uh, lost to Green Bay? I think one issue that I really honed in on is, you know, there was a big talking point throughout the season that at, coming out of the bye week is how the offense changed and how it started incorporating more motion. They stopped relying mm. on static sets. They stopped relying on two by two. They were doing a lot more bunch, a lot more three by one, even even load with uh, four receiving options to one side. Yeah. But I think the issue that the Cowboys ran up against at the end of the season is that it wasn't baked into their offensive identity coming into the training camp, mini camp, all that when your foundation of your offense is laid. And we saw kind of saw that they really maximize the output that they can get out of those things. And it caused them to kind of sputter at toward the end of the seasons when their, you know, their tendencies were becoming more and more apparent. And yeah. You know, I, yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say, it's interesting because they, they, you know, they, they kind of had that meeting at, at the, after the bye week and it feels like they, they had to, make huge shifts in the, uh, in the offense, but you're, I think you're right. You know, th those shifts and changes were made kind of over the bye week and, and not, not, you know, in training camp when they, you know, the fundamental install is happening. So you think that that kind of contributed to them sputtering down, down the, down the, you know, the end of the, the regular season into the, the postseason? Definitely. I mean, when you hear about the teams that use motion the most and use motion the best, the guys from the Shanahan tree, guys like Mike McDaniels and Kyle Shanahan, they bake it into the foundation of their mm -hmm. offense. Every concept that they have has the ability to do a variety of different motions. And that's just not something that you can incorporate when you're doing something over a bye week. You know, you can add motion to certain concepts or we're going to do these things here, do these things here, but it's not baked into the to the basic foundational principles that your offense was laid on. And when that's your issue, like I said, I think you reach the ceiling, you kind of maximize the output that you can do with that set of motions because it's not big. They can't incorporate it into everything they do. They can't use it as a, you know, as a counterpunch to defenses. You know, they don't have all those steps incorporated into their offense yet. And I think that is a big issue. And, in, and in, additionally, I think what we saw specifically against the Packers, you know, kind of jumping to another thing is, Dak Prescott was just really bad. It was just one of his mm -hmm. really poor performances. I think if anybody 
uh, pays attention to JT O'Sullivan at the QB school. He harps on yeah. his footwork all the time, and he talks about how it causes inconsistency in his game. And yeah. I think we saw that from a timing and an accuracy perspective. He was a, either a tick late or he was inaccurate. And a lot of that, in my opinion, came down to the footwork and the, how the footwork was hurting him. And it was just it would, when when you get those compounding factors together and it just turns into what we saw, you know. Yeah, it's it can really snowball on you, right? And so, I, I you know, it's interesting you mentioned the footwork because that's something that I, I've talked about a lot as well. You know, just like and at JT, obviously, I mean, everyone's it's it's easy to see that when Dak starts kind of splaying the ball a little bit, it's because he doesn't have his footwork as tight as it needs to be. I guess the thing that I'm trying to get to now, right, is trying to discover, you know, what's the cause of the sloppy footwork. You know, what's the cause? Like, what, what's getting him mentality into the point where is he, you know, getting getting nervous in the pocket and is hurrying his feet up? Is he is he too hot before a game? Because that's what it feels like at times, you know, when you watch him in some of these games where he it always seems the same when it when it's bad. Right. It's like it's when it's a DAC bad game. He, he comes out of the game like too hot or too excited, it feels like. Uh, and 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 it affects his feet because it feels like he's trying to move through things too quickly. He's not setting his feet when he needs to. Uh, he's not making sure that he's in a good body position to deliver the football. You know, um, it's it yeah. So it's an interesting you know it's interesting that we we kind of all have seen that from him. I, and I'm wondering is like what's the difference you think in trying to get him to have more consistent footwork is it just you think it's rep work you think you know some people have come have, have, have suggested sports psychologist you know that sort of thing to kind of is it about big games in your i mean obviously we're not psychologists but what do you think in your mind is it is it is it just about boom getting more reps or where 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 do we solve this problem at this point? i think a lot of it i think obviously it's a it's probably a variety of factors that contribute to it probably pressure probably a variety of things but the thing that i think is controllable in those for you know a coaching perspective or from the outside is the is the game script to open a game i think Dak yeah. is a very big rhythm based quarterback when he's in rhythm and he establishes that rhythm it's kind of he's one like we saw this year he's one of the best in the nfl and he can cut through almost any defense but when he gets out of that rhythm he like you said all of those issues that can come up his footwork you know not getting in the right throwing position you know getting power drainage because he's not stepping through or i mean jt was laughing at one in the packers game where he took three steps in a half a yard i mean he's yeah. stepping underneath himself he's not creating the space necessary he's not on time with the receivers coming out of their breaks and those type of things so i just think he's one of those guys he's just super rhythm based he's got to be in that natural rhythm and when you're not allowing him to get in that rhythm with the initial play script and game script you know it's tough and it, things can snowball, like you said, and then we see an outcome kind of like what we saw against the Packers. But I think it's important to note that those things are they're so apparent because they were so rare, especially this year. Yeah. You know, we didn't yeah. see many games where he looked that out of sorts. And I think of obviously it's unfortunate timing. But as our friend Cowboy Stats and Graphics says all the time, mm -hmm. you know, it's just unfortunate sequencing in what could happen in a game, you know if this happened in week 15 and then in the divisional round he gets he or the wild card round he plays like he did actually in week 15 it would have been a way yeah. different thing and we're saying oh my god he's so incredible i mean the fact that they say he goes so he like shrinks in the playoffs then how do you explain it against the buccaneers game last year compared to the packers game this year you know was there substantially more pressure this year than there was last year i don't think so they had the exact same record you know he played better this year so you would think that he would have even more confidence riding into this game than he would have last year and last year he lit them up he retired tom brady so i think just focusing and saying like oh he just shrinks in playoff moments is way too simplistic of a viewpoint in my opinion yeah and i think the biggest problem or not the biggest problem but one of the issues that you know dak has is that if he doesn't do that it it it, it gets if he doesn't perform well early it gets magnified a lot of times because <laughs> these bad games, it always seem to be paired with bad defensive performances. And, and that's mm -hmm. what kind of leads us to what we would need to talk about next. And that's the, the kind of up and down nature of Dan Quinn. Uh, and that we'll get to that coming up next. The segment is brought to you by better help. 
Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off of our chest, big or small. Some things can really start to get to you. That's why it's important to let it out, especially to someone who is unbiased in your life. So today I want to tell you how I really feel about something, maybe even something that you've been thinking about this week. I really want the Ravens to win on Sunday. I'm kind of tired of the Kansas City Chiefs always being in the Super Bowl. I want a new team. I want to see the Baltimore Ravens in the Super Bowl. I think that would be really, really fun. See, got it off my chest, feel a little bit better. Therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have much bigger problems than our favorite sports teams or rooting for the Ravens to win this weekend. And it's important to get things off of your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and convenient and suited to your schedule. Just visit betterhelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL season is wrapped up. We're getting really close to the Super Bowl, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you place a $5 bet. That is $150 guaranteed in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use. There's so many different ways to bet like Live same game parlays. You can find bets in the new explore tab, or you can make a parlay in the parlay hub, the best way to find popular parlays and so much more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup with FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, so welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. We got John owning. We're talking about the Dan Quinn defense. And, John, you know, it just feels like, you know, much like we kind of started the, the segment last uh, about the offense where you felt like there were points in the uh, season where the defense was obviously incredible. And, and much like in the offense, you have multiple player of the year nominees on this defense. It felt like it was stacked at different points. Um, you know, if, you know, if there was one weakness that you could peg to this defense uh, throughout the season, I think you could probably say that they were obviously a very up and down run team at certain points. But even then, that was quite overblown at certain points, and that certainly wasn't necessarily the reason that they lost to the Packers. So, uh, <clears throat> what you know, what <laughs> Dan Quinn and, and, and that has now become kind of an anomaly for me in a large a lot of ways because I respect so much about what he does. Uh, but there are definitely things about it that it feels like he's kind of refusing to to solve or to look at. You know, explain to me why I should feel good if Dan Quinn is coming back as a defensive coordinator, and then explain to me why I should feel bad if Dan Quinn is coming back as a defensive coordinator. Well, I think the one good I think the things that he does good is he's a fantastic leader. I mean, the yeah. guy his team you never will say that Cowboys defense isn't playing hard. They swarm to the ball. They're always you know, they do all those type of little things right. I mean, they were the best tackling team in the NFL by far. They had uh, the least amount of missed tackles in the entire NFL by double digits. I mean, they were just one of the most secure tackling teams in recent memory. It was just, and I don't think Dan Quinn gets enough credit for that. And people don't talk about that enough because, you know, people aren't looking at missed tackles is the type of thing with that is when it's happening, everybody's whining and complaining about it. But when they're yeah. not happening, people don't notice that they're not happening. And I think another thing that he doesn't get credit for, doesn't get enough credit for is like his ability to scheme up pressures. He's one of the best people at devising pressures from uh, whether it's stunts or blitzes. I mean, we saw a variety of times where he was able to create mismatches uh, using different blitzes, different alignments, different looks to do those type of things. And I think that's why you should be, and let's be honest, he, his defense is forced turnovers and tur forcing offenses to turn the bar all over is the most valuable thing that a defense can do. And I think that he was dealt a pretty bad hand from a personnel standpoint this year. I mean, if mm. I really talk about the Trevon Diggs injury, I talk about it all the time, how I think it was incredibly um, detrimental to the defense as a whole. I mean, 
putting them so shallow at the cornerback. I mean, Jordan Lewis started to play well at the end of the season, but for a while there, he was playing below average for a slot corner. You were holding on with both hands with yeah. them, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It so just then, feels like it, it just feels like, you know, that that there were times when after you know that after Trayvon Diggs got hurt and it was so early in the season that we all just kind of were like, oh, okay, it's fine. You know, do mm-hmm. we got to draw on bland? And then we just kind of moved on. But you're right. Like it, you know, the fact that the Cowboys were able to get away with it for the whole season, uh, you know, was was pretty impressive. And then, you know, once uh uh you know Jordan Lewis kind of was discovered and, and could kind of be kind of used as a punch and judy. You know, he made some plays back to back and some uh, some games at the end of the year, but that kind of overshadowed a little bit what was starting to become a, a leaky dam a little bit there in the back end. Yeah, totally agree. And um, just his ability to, and also the other personnel things they had to go through. You know, losing Le- Leighton Van Der Esch was yeah. a big deal. Losing Overshone hurt the yeah. uh, linebacker depth. You know, losing Hankins for those three weeks was a big deal. So I think he was kind of dealt a bad hand and the front office didn't really do him any favors in terms of adding talent to fill those voids. You know, they tried to go after Shaquille Leonard, but that didn't work out. We saw that at nose tackle, even though there was options like Tierra Tart and Isaiah Bugs, who we've seen play at least competently nose tackle yeah, snaps in the NFL, special. didn't even sniff at, e- at either of them, which doesn't mm-hmm. make much sense to me. They brought in Carl Davis, who was – not good at all when he was here. Didn't just, I think he was, he was on the street on the street. I think he obviously did more damage than he did good when he was in the game. He wasn't very good at all. And then you talk, that's what even out getting into the whole Mozzie Smith going on the Atkins diet situation Mm. with him losing so much weight and kind of ruining what made him such a great nose tackle at Michigan. So I think from those points of view, he was kind of dealt a bad hand that, you know, a lot of fans don't realize. And, if you go into next year and he gets maybe a little bit better injury luck at key positions, then I think better results will happen. But I think the reason to feel bad for it is just his inability to scheme up anything to combat motion and motion at the snap offenses. Yeah. You know, that especially against the Shanahan tree, who are like I was talking in the offense, that they bake in those motions to the fundamentals of their foundation of their offense. And the Cowboys just had – when it's against the run, I haven't seen a defense whose second level was so poor at falling back versus post snap motion, post snap movement mm-hmm. like sift blocks and stuff to fall back a gap to stay gap sound against those type of things as the Cowboys were. Damone Clark was below average at it. Marquise Bell was not good at it. It consist defense offenses consistently put them in a bind, and we were left with voided gaps because the linebackers just had an inability to do that on a consistent basis. And part of it is their fault. And part of it is the fault that the, a lot of the times the defensive tackles in front of them were getting their ass kicked. I mean, Mozzie Smith was very, very poor for most of the yeah. season, especially against double teams. He was getting bounced around a lot. And a lot of that, like I said, being a lot, being a lot lighter causes that in a lot of situations. Yeah. So yeah, some of the sift block stuff, you, you, you need to have a little bit more, <clears throat> you know, snaps experience mm-hmm. to, to know what's happening to you, to understand the angles that are being created by the, those blocks when they start getting up to the second level and either destroy them or get back to give yourself a little bit angle of, on, on, you know, trying to get into that gap. Um, and one I, other it's thing is frustrating. Yeah. Go one ahead. other thing that I think was a big issue is how much Dan Quinn focused has been stayed true to using static defensive rotations in the back end. Yeah. The Cowboys yeah. were one of the teams that least went least rotated their safeties, you know, from too high to one high or one high to two high in the NFL. Which is they the stay bad, right? So yeah. they stay so static. And I feel like that makes life a lot easier on opposing uh, quarterbacks. And I think we saw that kind of toward the end of the year as quarterbacks were kind of figuring out the Cowboys defense, the Cowboys structures. And when you don't have overwhelming uh, talent in the secondary because you don't have Trayvon Diggs anymore. Those voids are going to get taken advantage of consistently. The last thing before we move on is, you know, let's say, let's look into our crystal ball. Dan Quinn goes to all these second interviews. Hey, lo and behold, he decides he wants to stay as Dallas Cor- Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator. What's your immediate reaction? Bah. But the, the thing is like, I know it's complicated. Yeah, because if we're talking about realistic scenarios, in my opinion, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys is going to be either one or two people. It's going to be Dan Quinn or Joe Witt Jr. 
Yeah, that's and I think fair. if I would rather have Dan Quinn in that situation just because I know what I'm getting, I know that he can mm-hmm. do it. You know, Joe Witt, do I think he has the capability to be a great defensive coordinator? Yes, but I just haven't seen it. And I'd rather mm-hmm. trust the things that I have seen, honestly, per- personally. Well, let's see what we think we're going to see in the yeah. 2024 season as we head into the last segment. We'll talk about some predictions for what the Cowboys are going to look like next. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, all you have to do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks is the most fun that I've had playing DFS. Uh, because there's so many different players and so many different stat projections to choose from. Plus, Price Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who gets injured in the first half and does not return for the second, that player is rebooted. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So go to pricepicks.com slash LockedOnNFL and use promo code LOCKEDONNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to prizefix.com slash LOCKEDONNFL and use promo code LOCKEDONNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Every day or tomorrow, we will have Marcus back, hopefully, and we will be talking about all kinds of uh, – uh, uh, I think we'll be taking questions, actually, because it's Friday. So we'll be taking some questions for you guys, and uh, it will be a lot of fun because we have been getting some great questions, John, obviously, as uh, the, the season has been rolling on uh, – uh, it's been over and it's been rolling on into the off season. You know, Obviously, folks are super interested. People are obviously completely furious with what's going on or – uh, you know, uh, resigned sadness, which is a, a, another uh, another emotion that I'm sure we're all uh, dealing with after what happened uh, against Green Bay. But let's talk about what's going on in, in this next year and, and and not what happened last year. We we kind of have an idea. I mean, we, we, we haven't gotten the defensive coordinator position, obviously, resolved, as we just talked about. But everything else seems to be kind of settled to a large degree. I, you know, I think Mike McCarthy's coming back. I, I don't expect there to be a change in offensive coordinator necessarily, uh, but we'll see, right? Um, now that we kind of have an idea of, of, of the way things are trending and, and and sort of at least the kind of grand scheme of what the uh, of the team's plans are, what what <laughs> you know, I think you and I may agree, and, and you tell me if we don't. We, we that it's it's hard to get super hyped about. Uh, about this kind of uh, this reiteration of this same team because it does feel sort of like a retread to a large degree. But do you expect that? I mean, it's is it possible that the Cowboys actually take a significantly step a significant step back instead of a step forward uh, just by trying to kind of recreate this whole scenario? Or do you feel like, at the very least, the the, the reason that the the Joneses are doing this? is because they feel like there's a healthy floor at, you know, nine or 10 wins and unless, you know, a, a major DAC injury or something like that. Yeah, man, this is the NFL. I think the, the differences between being a great team and a, and a poor team are not that big. So it, it could yeah. easily go against the Cowboys. I mean, to say they, we know about the cap situation, especially with Dak's contract, if they don't touch it and they stay close up against the cap and say they lose some of their role players. They lose some of the guys like Stefan Gilmore and Dorrance Armstrong, and they lose some of their depth. And then in the draft, they don't have the wealth of picks to really restock the the shelf, so to speak. So it could definitely, there's definitely ways they could get much worse for the Cowboys next year, rather than maintaining where they are or getting better. But there's also, I think, pathways towards getting better. You know, if they're, you know, Brian brought us has hinted about this on a lot of podcasts he's been on, but there's, you know, whispers from inside of there that they're going to be more aggressive this off season, which makes sense to me. I, I don't under, it wouldn't make any sense to me if you're telling McCarthy that this he's going into the last year of his contract, but I'm not going to give you any more, you know, talent. I'm not going to actually go for it. I'm going to still maintain this, you know, we see that we're building for the future type of way that the Cowboys kind of go about their off seasons consistently as, in the last decade or so 
So if they're more aggressive and they go on and attack these positions that have really give the, that they really lack depth and they lack the types of players that are necessary to be successful in the December and January in the NFL, I think they could get much better. You know, there's, the jury's not out as much as people are disappointed with the Cowboys standing yeah. pat from a coaching perspective. There's still ways to get much better from a personnel's perspective. Yeah, I certainly think that there's a chance that this team is bad. I certainly think that there's a chance in the same way that this team is better somehow. You know, and maybe you know, it's possible they get over the hump. I mean, we kind of are right to dismiss it because it's it sometimes is foolish thinking, but it certainly is possible. I mean, look, I, we've said this on the show over and over again. Anytime that anyone says something's not going to happen in an NFL season, I mean, geez, go go, <laughs> go watch it happen, man. It happens yeah. all the time. Um, I, I want to circle back a little bit on what you said about the whispers because I, I have also heard similar whispers that the Cowboys may be a little bit more aggressive in free agency this year. I also think that it, it may not necessarily have to do with the kind of lame duck uh, uh, McCarthy season as potential – uh, the fact that the, the analytics team that has been put into place, uh, I think maybe that is starting to get into whisper in the ear, Stephen, a little bit, and 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 and, and he, getting to hear that. Listen, there are legitimate, uh, uh, good cap reasons, and that that makes sense that that you can get over this, and that it, it has good team building benefits, and and they can kind of quantify that a little bit better, or at least I'm hoping that's what's happening. So, uh, yeah, I, I I'm hoping that they that those whispers are true as well, and 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 I think the Cowboys. Uh, you know, and chances of, of kind of taking the next step uh, would increase if they were to have that kind of attitude during free agency. So uh, I'm excited to see that before let's move on real quick. Cause I, I do want to talk about which side of the ball, you know, where we are now. I mean, obviously, like I said, still not finalized and everything, but which side of the ball at this point, do you feel like you have the most concern for going into the next season? You know, let's in a, in a world that let's let's go ahead and, and, and assume the what we what we're talking about that either Wit or Quinn is the defensive coordinator. Just kind of looking at personnel and scheme fit in that sense. Which side of the ball are you most concerned? Of which side do you think obviously needs the most work heading into this offseason? Hundred percent defense. I'm someone yeah. who's still a Dak believer. I think they have a lot of talent on that side of the ball, honestly. And uh, with Dak, you know, CD, um, Brandon Cooks, yeah. If, it's Jake Ferguson, bring him back. I think the yeah. offensive line is close. It, even though we haven't gotten the results uh, that we want for them, I think they are close to being a great unit with Tyron Smith, Tyler Smith, and Zach Martin specifically. If you can help improve the center position this offseason, you know, through the draft or free agency, what have you, and maybe get Terrence Steele's year or two back from the ACL, play a little bit new, better. Stop New line coach maybe? Too? Yeah, new, stop, new, stop, new stop, stop telling coach? him to use outside hand strikes to play long and let him go back to being an inside where he can Agree. be a lot more effective like he was right before the injury. That would make sense, huh? What? Yeah. But then, but then the defense, you know, you have significant issues up the middle of it. I think De Damone Clark really showed that he's not really the guy to be – yeah, the Mike starting Mike linebacker. I think we don't know what if Van der Efsch is ever going to play a snap again. So you mm -hmm. got to get better at the linebacker position. I think nose, you can still improve the nose tackle position. Who knows if Hankins is going to be back? He's getting old. Mm -hmm. You know, Mozzie Smith, you need to get him to put some weight on. Maybe they draft someone there. Maybe they go free agency there. There's just, I mean, even if, even if you lose, at going to the edge, even the edge defender position, which we everybody thinks is the most depth. If we lose Dorrance Armstrong and Dante Fowler, you're going to have to in, bring in some talent there as well, whether through the draft or free agency that, uh, to uh, fix the holes that those guys leaving would be. So I definitely think the defensive side of the ball is the one that needs more attention from a personnel standpoint. I think a lot of the things for the offense can be fixed with scheme. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think that, you know, and you, you brought it up too. I think, Armstrong is a guy that that doesn't get enough credit on this team, and I, I brought it up on the pod a lot. That not only as a special teams player, but just as a player on your defensive line, you know, being able to move Micah Parsons around usually means that you have to have somebody who has the kind of corresponding flexibility to play multiple gaps and 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 being able to move around uh, and and do some of the dirty work. And I think that Dorrance Armstrong, despite I, I'm pretty sure being the second sa leading sacker on this team that last last two seasons. Um, is you know didn't get quite the credit that that uh, that you know he he needs to uh, you know it's 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 hard to get credit as a defensive end uh, on this on this Cowboys defense if you're and he's a phenomenal special teamers and he's a yeah that's right phenomenal if, special teamer 
if not one of the best special, if not one of the best special team players uh, in all of the league, he certainly is uh, top two or three on this team uh, at the very least. So, uh, yeah, I mean, especially last year, I think he, you know, he had a block field goal and a touchdown, and you know, all kinds of different stuff, and was like, I think one of the leading tacklers as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, uh, you're right that it seems like if they can make some tweaks on there, maybe some coaches changes on the offensive side, defense, they really do need to kind of replenish a little bit, and and just they 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 need some fresh blood in there, and and fi- they got some decisions that they need to make on some players. Uh, uh, like you know, Leighton Vander Esch, is he ever gonna? Is he playing anymore? Is he coming back this next year? Uh, I think Marquise Bell is a guy that they sh- they should have interest in, kind of continuing to work on. But you know, 100%. is is he ready for a full time job as a as a off off linebacker with someone like Demone Clark next to him? Maybe they need to kind of reconfigure that a little bit. So there are definitely questions, but it feels like as far as uh, personnel and 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 needing to add to. Uh, the defense is is a little bit behind where the offense needs to be. Uh, that's it for us, guys. Uh, th- I want to thank John so much for joining us uh, on the show. It was such a great uh, time to get his uh, opinion on stuff, and obviously we get his opinion on his, on stuff all the time uh, quietly. So it's nice to, for you guys <laughs> to get to hear it as well. So, uh, John, uh, if you guys, I mean, make sure you check out his work. Uh, he's he's uh, doing some editing over at PFF, but every once in a while we get lucky and uh, he sneaks an article in there as well. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, every day is make sure you check us out tomorrow uh, and we'll uh, we'll have uh, uh, questions for you guys uh, until then uh, happy trails everybody